Hi everybody and welcome back to Greater Manchester Stories. This episode's amazing guest is Barry Wall, who's a force just by himself. So first of all, welcome Barry to the show. Thank you, Nick. It's good to be here. So this podcast is called Greater Manchester Stories. What's your story? Ah, Manchester. How I love thee. I've been here now over 20 years. I get ribbed because I've still got the West Country accent, you know, or but I've been here for over 20 years and I've lived in the city centre of Manchester for all that time, close to the gay village, Manchester's famous gay village. Well, what once was Manchester's gay village. And uh, I came up here after coming to visit once and thought, hello, this is where my people are. So I came up and it turned out, yes, it was where my people were. So I've now been here for quite some time, but I'm considerably older than when I arrived. And I've seen phenomenal changes happening in Greater Manchester. We've seen, you know, uh, the skyscrapers going up, everything changing, and which has been um, a major part of my being here, although I'm not particularly happy with the nature of the architecture. I think it's all a bit brutalist, frankly. It's like nobody's got any imagination at all. Uh, it's been a pleasure to be living in Manchester this long, uh, a, a city populated by the most friendly of people, generally. You know, it's been great. Um, you go to London, the difference is phenomenal, phenomenal. It really is. What are the changes? What, what are the changes you've seen in the Manchester gay village area? Because when I was, when I first started going to Manchester City Centre, there was no gay area of Manchester. And the area around Canal Street now was derelict and it was full of female prostitutes. Well, that you're going back now, <laughs> Nick. It's interesting because there's a, there's a, um, there's a television programme called The Road to Coronation Street, which is the story of Granada bringing, bringing Coronation Street to the people. It's a fantastic series. And there's a bit in that where two of the characters, which ostensibly is the, the original writer and the woman who played, what was her name? Oh, oh God. Um, it was played by Cat from EastEnders. What's her bloody name? I can't remember. Jesse Wallace, right, uh, plays one of the characters. And she said, oh, I'll come down the union with you. Because the only one that was there was the union. And he said, how do you know about the union? So oh, I know it was me. Well, that changed it. You know, it changed many years ago when Mantos, which was owned by a marvellous woman who unfortunately is no longer with us, got rid of the dark windows and opened them up and said, right, here we go. We're here to stay. And then the whole thing exploded after Queer as Folk came out in the late 90s. So that was a, it was a renaissance to a certain degree from the late 90s up until about 2004, 2005. And it was wonderful to be part of it. I mean, the first time I ever came up, it seemed sparkly and marvellous and you know, and like everywhere, it looks like that, but it's got a dark underbelly. But I had the most fantastic time for many, many years running quizzes, you know, being involved with the local um, the local goings on and uh, working for various bar owners. In I was a photographer for a while. Then I was a marketer for a while and I did some trading for a while. So it was a really interesting period of time for me. Um, that's gone. I mean, it's, it's completely gone. I don't recognise the place anymore. It's gone all mad. And when um, And when you say mad... What do you mean, Matt? Well, it, I mean, it used to be you get the gays and lesbians would get together there. The lesbians and the gays don't always get on, right? But we've always had each other's backs. So when, when gay men were dying of AIDS, it was the lesbians that were by our beds, right? Okay, that's that's we've always had each other's backs. But that, what we've ended up with now is a, is a strange conglomeration of people that call themselves the uh, LGBTQI2SA. As you know, I call them the look of it's Q people, right? Who are nothing whatsoever to do with being gay and lesbian and everything to do with hard far left ideology insane sort of collectivism and they don't even believe that there's male and female and they think it's okay to tell children about you know all sorts of bloody nonsense which they're which they're doing in schools and most of which seems to be ably supported by the labor uh council and the mayor who have quite happily signed you know trans pledge for this and queer pledge for this. it's absolute utter nonsense but i don't think most people in manchester have any ideas happening so so the village has fallen for this yeah, they're falling for a hook, line and sinker. It's a complete takeover. They're, it's cuckoos, cuckoos in the nest. I mean, there's not, you know, so so lesbians used to be a really big fixture on the village, right? As I said, we didn't always get on, but we knew it'd be all right, you know, and that's gone. I mean, there's, I don't think there's a safe space for, for lesbians in the village at all. In fact, lesbians have been ejected from the village by these people, you know, until they can't come in. I mean, you all know of, of Helen Joyce and, and, you know, people that are doing work in this area got turned away by a bar, so you're not coming in. So Manchester Gay Village now is turning away lesbians because they perceive them that they've got the wrong views. Yeah, that's right. So the fact that lesbian is, isn't enough anymore now. That's right, right? So, so you and I both know that lesbians like other women, right? And that gay men like other men. Well, not to this lot. This lot, you have to be gender 
same gender attracted and same same, which means that they're telling me I haven't met the right girl yet. How dare you? Right? And they're telling lesbians that you have to have men in your dating pool. You must accept men LARPing as women in your dating pool. It's a disgrace. So do do all or do, do the vast majority of gay men and lesbian women agree with this and are on the side of this, or is there a backlash coming now? You're, you're beginning to see a backlash, but it, it's it's small, Nick. You know, it, most of it's going on online, but people get they sort of get a bit of it and they go, "What? <laughs> what? Can you just can you expand on that?" And then they start a process which we call peaking, which is ah, they've got it. You can watch the you know the dominoes, you know, like that. And you know that I run the Warrior Teacher Program, which is designed to teach people why all of this nonsense is so dangerous. Not you know, not just around gender, but generally around. The hard left movement, particularly some of the activities we're seeing from Mayor Andy Burnham, for example. Let me ask you some questions for for the audience because this is quite a complicated topic, and most people don't live through this because the you know they're not gay, so it doesn't affect them. So it just goes on by. Is it right to say that if if you have issues with gender ideology or your kids having drag queens perform at school? or you've got children's books about homosexuality at seven years old. Are you a homophobe? Are you a nasty person if you disagree with this sort of stuff? No. Right. You know, if you're seven years old and you've got uh, two uncles that live together, Bob and, you know, Bob and Brian, you're going to know that well, Bob and Brian love each other. Isn't that lovely? So Bob and Brian, are they together, mummy? Yes, they are. Here's a biscuit. Go outside. Right. What we've got is this interference constantly in the development of the child by these lunatic left and liberal organizations. And they're doing so in schools. They're doing it in primary schools and they're doing it in secondary schools, teaching these unreal ideologies, which are based upon a political system that most people I imagine that are watching this. And most people in, in Manchester, if they understood, understood it fully, simply wouldn't get behind Nick. But they're but they're not going to see it because, as you just said, it's very complicated, some of it. But I'll give you an example of what's going on. There's money being given to an organization to take this stuff into small and medium enterprises. Right. They want to go into business and get business to be start start being, you know, allies and to call out for the look of the queue and to put up their posters and put up their flags. They're spending money, the council, on doing this. This is taxpayers' money. Taxpayers' money. Wow. Right. Taxpayers' money. So you've got this, you've got these ridiculous, mad ideologues sitting at the centre of the management system of Greater Manchester, which, from my perspective, is a gay city, right? <laughs> you know, I came here for that. And they are now turning it into um, a revolting idea, which means that you can sterilise gay children. You know, if that young gay person, oh, he's a bit, he's a bit fey, isn't he? He thinks he's, he thinks he's Lady Gaga, right? Get him down the gender clinic. It's the old stereotypes of, but it's terrifying. Castrate him and turn him into a woman. Yeah, and turn him into a woman. That's what yeah, they And think if you're a girl, a tomboy girl, it's like chop her breasts off, give her a short haircut because she's a man now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And remember, the, 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 the failure rate for the operation is 100%. 100%, because you can't change your sex. Right, but they're telling kids. I have I met a 13-year-old kid at a demonstration, young lady, who young girl, I mean, she's a child, for God's sake, who thought that she was a boy. I'm gay. You're not gay, love. You're a man. You know, you're a woman. No, no, I've been told. By whom? And then the woman that was with her grabbed her away and said, don't talk to this man. They know what they're doing. It's the homophobia of old and it's back with a new overcoat on. Yeah, and what people need to understand, I think, is the second largest, well, the second largest amount of transgender surgery happens in Iran. Why does that happen in Iran? Because if you're gay, you're thrown off a building. And if you're given a choice, let the doctors mutilate you, pretend you're a woman, or we're going to throw you off a building. I know which one I'd be choosing. Yeah, yeah. It's the same principle. People don't get it, right? People don't get it. So in schools, they're saying to kids, there was a brilliant video that went up recently, which actually exposed a classroom. It was horrifying. I don't know if you can find the link and perhaps put it into your documentation. This. Um, they're saying to the kids, oh, you know, you can choose whether you're a boy or a girl. And some people are this. I mean, it's a mad anti-science, anti-human belief system, and it's being propagated by t prop uh, propagated through the education system. And that's the biggest worry for, for, I should think, for anyone, would be that they're experimenting on children. Come on, Manchester, you know right is right.
You know, I talk to bank union people who are of the left and of the right and of the middle, and they all go, what? Because they think that this is political. It's not political, it's culture. And the culture of Manchester Council is corrupted by it. Corrupted by it, because I know this, because I spoke to a number of councillors who are unable to speak about it openly. Wow. And they're, and they're fearful of their position. They're fearful of their position. So they'll get labelled a bigger. Yeah. Right, let's wrap up. So if, if you wanted to give one piece of advice to the listeners of Greater Manchester, what would that advice be? Well, it, it would be, be curious. Get curious. Get very curious indeed. And start looking at what your school is doing with your children. And start looking at what your children are being taught via the TV or via the social media. Get very curious about this. Because you need to understand the lies that are being used to pervert the lives of young children and the safeguarding that isn't taking place. That'll be the, and become a warrior teacher. Yeah, I'll, yeah, you've got a program called Warrior Teachers, The Winning Mindset. I'll put that link in the description. It's a fantastic course. Go on it if, if, if you can. And I think my advice to people would be, if you're a parent, you are wholly responsible for your child. Not the state, not the school, not anybody else. You are fully responsible for your child. And we need to start drilling that back into parents. You're the boss of your child, no one else. I agree. I agree. Absolutely. That's great, Barry. I'm going to get you back on again soon because there's so much we can discuss. Oh, um, in there. There is. And, and we will, over the next couple of months, we'll, we'll get through all of it. Thanks very much. I'll catch you soon. Great to see you, Nick. And you. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.